Densefly Serona just released Serac 5.2. It's so awesome. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be uh, very, very happy with this release. You know, I, on every release, one thing I've always said over all these years is that it's either a software-focused uh, release uh, and features, or it's a release where it's just making things more robust. This release, however, they're doing both. So there's a lot of new features that are pretty cool, and then they've also done a lot of things to make things more stable and, and faster. The Prime Scan is a lot quicker, it's faster, it's more consistent. If you're a Prime Scan user right now, you're going to really enjoy two main things. One is it gets rid of the artifacts so much faster. It's just amazing. It's almost like it just erases away when like a, the lip gets in the way or a cheek or the tongue. It just it'll spoil you. The other thing that it does extremely well, and you know this, so on any shiny surface, and I'm not talking even metal or anything like that, just a shiny, wet enamel, let's say, you used to kind of get a little bit of a spike and you have to image it more and more and dry it out and then it would kind of take care of it. Now it just is not there anymore. The, the models are a lot cleaner and, you know, we're way past the days of uh, not being able to image metal. The Prime Scan can do that extremely well. So those are the main things with the Prime Scan. They've really pumped up the volume, so to speak, with the Prime Scan. The software in general is much more stable. Uh, I know some people have had some issues with crashes and things like that, but uh, what you're going to find and feel as you're using it, that it just seems a little bit more seamless. It has an automatic uh, saving feature now. So in prior years of Seric, it would save when you got up to a certain point. And then once you got past that point, then you would save it again another point. Now it's based on time. So every now and then you'll see a little circle uh, spinning and it's just because that time elapsed and it's now saving the file, which is really critical. It's a really good thing. It should have some sort of auto save. So they kind of brought that back just in a different way. And you can uh, uh, affect that up in your uh, secret window underneath the settings. You can determine how, what the intervals of that is. What else? Oh, uh, as far as the software, the automatic margin finder is a lot better. It's not perfect. I don't know if it'll ever be perfect, but you know, in, in prior versions, it would do some of it, and then you have to redraw it. Now there are times where I'm not adjusting them at all. I find that it's exactly where it should be. Again, if the margin's very exposed and, and look nice, it's easier for it to find it. Uh, it'll be more in the subgingival areas where it has a little bit harder time uh, finding that margin, but it's m much better. You'll like that. Oh, the biogeneric calculations are, uh, d they're faster, they're, they just look better. And it's this artificial intelligence that they're, they've thrown into the software on uh, the, the prediction of the uh, tooth anatomy is uh, really coming on its own now and really looking really good. So if you're doing a lot of biogeneric restorations, you're gonna like these as well. And then the prime mill, you have the prime mill. They've worked countless hours on making the firmware better. Uh, since I've been in 5.2, uh, I don't think I've had one issue with the Prime Mill at all. It's just been completely seamless. Uh, so I don't anticipate there being many issues that people find out in the field with the new firmware. Now, as far as uh, the features go, uh, some of these are uh, my passion and some aren't. So I apologize if I just kind of run through some of these because I'm not too concerned about it. One is the uh, CERIC guide. I don't do any surgery in, in my practices. It doesn't have an impact on me, but uh, basically on the, on the CERIC guide, uh, you, when you import uh, the file, uh, it'll show the, the proposal immediately. Uh, they've uh, made the design of the guide a lot easier with their tools. And then also they've made little cutout areas for the interproximal surfaces so that you can see the adjacent teeth, which to me, I would think they should have always had that, but I guess they haven't. And uh, it's easier to design in smaller spaces now, I guess. The next one is the full range of the dynamic occlusion. Uh, you know, the dentists, we either, we're either one direction or other, and, and the, the functional guys get really excited about bulk will angle and everything. And 
I'm kind of that person, but kind of not. Uh, so they've added a lot more parameters for the articulator, which is awesome because you know they're setting it up for the future to where we have true articulation, I believe, where it's not just based off of an articulator, but it's off actual human movement of our jaws and our um, condyles and our um, fossa. So anyway, uh, that's improved greatly. Uh, so the next three, are, th three things I'm gonna spend most time on. The view model feature. Um, I was gonna show this in the software, but it's easier just to mention. You don't have to set up a restoration to just do a scan anymore. So let's say you're gonna print a model um, or you just wanted to show the patient something, a new patient, not even making a restoration, you'd have to tell Sarek that you're doing number one inlay with some material, so just so you can proceed. But you don't have to do that anymore. You can just scan it in and scan in the upper and lower, and then you can get to the model phase and look at the model. And it will also show it in the articulation mode, so like let's, with, the, with the articulation marks. So if you were gonna discuss uh, occlusion or bite patterns or anything like that with a new patient, you can scan them in and then go straight to the model phase and then show them. So that's a, I think that's really powerful. In fact, I think I wanna start integrating more of that into our new patient exams. Plus that'll help with the, uh, the AuraCheck program as well. Uh, the last two things I'm gonna talk about uh, are probably the things I'm the most excited about. Uh, the, extra fine grinding there's been a lot of um, updates in not just how things are milled or ground but also the tools as well so i'll talk about fast grinding emacs here in just a second so let me show you um, uh, some of the tools and and densply serona has because there's so many uh, new tools and too many to think about when it comes to the prime mill, they've made a chart, which you can download uh, at my.sarek.com. So this is the chart here, let me back up. <clears throat> and what you are seeing is um, basically all the burrs are the tools that we can use and they're all color coordinated. And so the white ones are the diamond burrs, uh, the yellow one is for um, uh, zirconia, the red is for PMMA, and then the blacks are for zirconia as well. When you look at the pictures, the uh, little transponder, I can't think of the name of what that's called. Uh, somebody's gonna correct me, but the thing, you, the little uh, digital thing you put up to the prime mill, it allows it to know what bird is and how, how much percentage of life it has on it. They're color coordinated as well. So white, a yellow, a red, and two blacks. So if we look at the um, whites here, uh, we have the standard burrs, uh, 1.4, 1.2, this pointed burr. And then now we're into much smaller diamond burrs. I mean, this is 0.6 of a diamond tip. So, I mean, and that's the pointed side. Let me zoom in so you can see that. So much smaller uh, diameter tip uh, milling burrs, grinding burrs. So those are the, uh, the diamonds. Then we'll jump down to the uh, yellow ones here. So these are for uh, zirconia and this is a 0.5, so much, much smaller for uh, uh, milling zirconia one millimeter and then a 2.5 then the blacks here are for even smaller let me make sure I'm, I'm in the right zone here I'm getting lost on my uh yeah here we go uh so oh I'm sorry this is where we're at we're on these two here uh, that's why they made a chart it's hard to follow so what I want you to realize though is this half CS spur. Look at how small this thing is. This is crazy. So I'm gonna zoom in on this. You can just see it right next to the letters. Let me get this focused. I mean, look at the the tip of that. I mean it's like 
it's almost as thick as the font of, of that print right there. So this is the 0.5 CS Burr. So when you look at the, the details of this, it will do the zirconia and the, the PMMA. And then the, the red is the burr. This is the one that was always confusing with the uh, MCXL milling zirconia because the, it, it looked like it could do zirconia too, but it was just the, um, the flutes were just right at the end, whereas the zirconia was the entire burr was fluted. So that's how I always remembered. But now everything is color coordinated and easier to find. So again, the colors are designated at the tip. Next thing in this chart is um, the tool uses. So uh, when you're looking on your prime mill, it will give you all these different options. Uh, milling, whether it's zirconia or PMMA, or your grinding. And then it also adds an extra fine in the grinding mode. And again, these are the colors of the burrs that you're going to use to put in the, uh, the milling unit. So that's uh, the focus of milling right now. And again, we've got almost too many to think about. Uh, there's too much. But uh, the cool thing about when Densply Serona makes their products, they're making products for the needs of multiple dentists. So you can kind of find where your niche is and what you like. And one of my favorite things is, um, let me get back to this slide, is uh, Emacs. And uh, when we were testing out the fast grinding, I was a little skeptical because I've, I've never been a fan of fast grinding of anything actually uh, with the MCXLs. It just, I don't like the striations. I didn't like that it was cutting a little bit deeper into it. But because the prime mill mills basically kind of more in circles, the strategies of milling uh, apparently is a lot easier to do in our glass ceramics uh, under hard grinding conditions. And so the fast grinding that I saw, I could not tell the difference between fast grinding and fine grinding when, when it came to Emacs. And one thing that I would really like for you to at least um, appreciate, you know, this is in a collaboration with Ivoclar Vivident and Densply Serona. So they have to, uh, in order for it to be approved within the software, there has to be a lot of testing that's done, including from the beta testers and the, the people internally in the, um, in the businesses. And then they finally say, hey, is this something that's going to be uh, good for our patients? They just can't turn it on without validating uh, the fast grinding. And so I know there's been some people that have been waiting for this and it's taken a little bit of time, but there's a lot to do. And you know, if I can go back to the chart, there's, in fact, let me go back to the chart for a second. Uh, on another page here is all of the different materials you can see, and then the combinations of the burrs that can mill them. And so there are materials that are still outside the United States that are going to be an option, like, like Shofu. I, I mean, that's a great dental company. They've got blocks that are coming out here pretty soon, and, um, you know, they're maybe only uh, available in Japan right now. But Shofu, um, why don't you give me a call? Let's figure out the names of these a little bit better because hard A-N or super hard, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. They should come up with some better names than that. But anyway, Shofu, good try. Let's come up with some more fancy names. But anyway, the, uh, the materials are expanding as well, which is always a good thing. But as you know, Emacs has always been... Um, one of the tried and true materials, and most people are using that using that material in a, many different ways. And so to get it to be able to be fast milled or ground uh, was quite the feat for that to happen. I want to show just a couple things on the software and I'll be done with this. So uh, if you're going to fast mill or fast grind Emacs, just one thing to consider. So we're in the mill preview stage or the manufacturing stage. When you look here, uh, I'm set it up for a prime mill to mill it out. You do fast fine or extra fine. Extra fine would be with the smaller burrs. Fine is just your regular mode milling. And then fast. This may be grayed out if you haven't set up a couple things. And um, in order for this to be available, I'm going to go back to the design phase here. In the 
parameter setting of it, I'll just scroll down to this, the uh, margin thickness, which is right here, I'm gonna click on it. It has to be at a minimum of 100 microns. Okay, so if I set that at 100 microns, it may still be grayed out because you have to have the margin ramp width also at 100 microns. Both of those two things have to be set in order for you to grind Emacs fast in the um, prime mill. So when you look at this case again, uh, the fast is turned on. If any one of, either one of those were turned off, you wouldn't be able to mill in the fast mode. And I'm changing the way I'm thinking about things. I'm starting to think that fast grinding Emacs may be one of my ways to go, which I, like I said before, I had never done that in the, uh, with the MCXL. So great things happening with Seric 5.2. Uh, thanks for joining me and check out Digital Enamel TV.